you know, they were flunking the test and he was giving them B's and A's. Okay? And the students began to see themselves as good performers, good students, smart students. And after several months of getting good grades on their own, they began to get the grades. And uh, he published it, and uh, you, can, you can Google Professor Leakey, you know, it's, it's all documented, and many other schools and psychologists began to duplicate his experiment and came up with the same results. You see that? Okay? And um, you found people like uh, Maxwell, you know, created psycho you know, Maxwell, you know, he was a, um, um, you know, surgeon, plastic surgeon, and he realized that most of the women uh, that came to him for work, you know, had a low self-esteem, a negative self-image. Uh, and he realized that when he, he performed his surgery, you know, uh, the negative self-image image did not go away. It was in the psyche. So he had not to perform surgery on the psyche, so he created psycho -cybernetics. You see that? And he made a ton of money, you know, with self image psychology. He changed his profession at the age of 50 or 60 or something like that, you know, to do this and so forth. But the thing is, is that, you know, uh, self image psychology did not fully achieve, okay, uh, its promise because of the human factor, which we're going to talk about later on. Next slide, please. Auto-suggestive power of the self-image. Well, that, what I'm simply saying to you, when Leek is, took these students and gave them good grades unknown to them, whether they had the, you see that, okay? <coughs> they saw themselves as learners now, you know, good students and so forth, okay? So you, when you see yourself a certain way, okay, and you become convinced that you are good or that you are dumb, or that you are a failure or you're successful, that image of yourself works to constantly suggest to you. You follow what I'm saying? I can do it, I can't do it, I'm gonna mess up. Uh, you, you follow what I'm saying? Yes, it's a suggestion that, that the thought visits you. You know, stream of thought just comes to you constantly. It's, so that's what the self image does. And that, that, that thought that comes to you, you accept it more readily than somebody suggesting something to you. Is that to you? Because you say, this is my fault. You know, you know we don't want, we don't want nobody telling us anything. You know what I'm saying? You want to be the person to inform yourself who you are, what you like, and what you can do. You know what I'm saying? You want to talk negative about yourself, not somebody talking negative about you. That's your right to do that, right? So that's what we mean by, you know, the auto-suggestion. Very powerful. You see that? So once you crystallize around an image of what you're like, who you are, that crystallized image begins to constantly, all day long, suggest to you what you can do and can't do. You see that? All right? If you believe that a particular illness is fatal, and the doctor says to you, oops, you have that illness, you're going to get constant thoughts about dying. <laughs> you with me, okay? And you know, lots of people go into remission because they never accepted the thought that they would die. We call that all depressions, you know, fighting to live. You know, that's what you yeah? It's that mindset. Next slide, please. The human self-image is the source of all ills. Hello? <laughs> the human self-image. Human. The word human is a contraction of humus, man. Humus is soil, dirt, the man of soil, okay? The physical body, okay, all right? And it is really the physical body, legitimately so, but the, it's also the uh, part of being that is controlled by emotions and sensuality. You see that? In other words, you know, uh, we use the human identity to excuse everything we do wrong. 
Okay, when preacher man was caught in the red light district, you know, cavorting against, you know, in contradiction to what he preaches. The congregation says, well, let's, let's, let's forgive preacher man because he's only human. <laughs> I'm only human, that's why, you know, I did you wrong, says Smokey Robinson. Right? I did you wrong. My heart is, I'm only human, you know. Take me, baby, please, please, take me back. So, we use, we play the human card, okay, to get away with murder. Every time we mess up, we play that human card because the, but the definition of human is that you are subject to control by your emotions and your sensuality, which are not guides to proper action. Here, yeah? Emotion is animation. The emotion is the animation, the animal spirit within you. Okay? The animal brains within you, which we'll talk about a little later. You got these animal brains, besides your human internal brains and your the brain that connects with your spirituality, you have two little animals inside of you as well. Alright? And it's a source of your emotion, your animation, your motivation, behavior that has nothing to do with reasoning and thinking. You see, the behavior that comes from the human part of being, you know, bypasses consciousness and volition. So if you say, I am human, you are identifying with the animal inside of you, with that part of you that makes you do things through its energy as opposed to through your understanding. Okay? And since, you know, if you go to an early book of psychobiology, you will learn that when you are in the grips of an emotion, if it's... Go to any book on psychobiology, psychobiology, the relationship of psychology, behavior, and biology. When you're in the grips of fear, anger, worry, grief, okay, lust, okay, your body reacts hormonally, you know, and, you know, in a manner that is not good for you. It's a cascade of free radicals and all kinds of things that's destructive to your health and well-being. Your IQ drops. That's why people, when they're angry and upset, say and do foolish things. You see that? Okay? The IQ drops and some of us can't afford not one point. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> mercy, man. So, if emotion affects your clarity of perception, your reasoning, your health, your IQ, it cannot be natural to you. Nothing that is harmful to you can be natural. Are you clear on that? Yes, sir. You walk around talking about, naturally I was upset. See, this is, you're part of a culture that has so many built-in, you know, fallacies, destructive fallacies in it. And that's the problem. You see, you know, many hypnotherapists, psychotherapists, religious, you know, leaders and so forth, they accept the human self-image. They accept an image for you that you are by nature controlled by your emotions. But the emotions what makes you do wrong and, and makes you sick. Emotion is stress. Make up your mind which way you want to go next. Human is not, it's not a being. There's no such as a human being. The human is a phase, a stage, in the early part of your growth. Okay? In other words, you're born human. You're supposed to outgrow the human. You see that? When you are born, you know, the, the, the two lower brains within you control your behavior. Okay? I have a daughter. You know, she's wonderful. You know, her little son, you know. When he, you, you know the children we have when they want something, they, you know, they start to yell and scream and thrash about. And she says, you know, uh, use your words, Chella, use your words. Stop crying and use your words. You see what I mean? <laughs> you see, the language of 
children is an emotional language. You know that, right? They scream, they yell, they kick, they bite. They, it's an animal language. Because they don't have yet, they haven't built in words and ideas. You, you see that? Symbols. Okay, that's going to, you know, and we have to teach them to, you know, next time somebody messes with you, come and say something either, don't kick back or whatever. You see that? Sir? Next slide. So how do human identity created? How do we come to identify with the human? How do we create a human self-image for ourselves? You see that? Okay, which is only a phase in our growth. First of all, it's because we spent the first 28 years of life dominated by the animal brains within us. Okay, in a society that believes that that's the final stage of growth. You see that? Okay. That's the problem. All right, it's going to get shocking as we go through this lecture here. Uh, next slide, please. Now, uh, here's the brain, right? Okay, you have a little point or something, uh, Chanel? Yeah, a little. Uh, or, uh, oh, that's, anyhow, you see this thing here? This part of the brain here? Yes, sir. Okay, that's called the reticular complex, the R complex. It's also called the reptilian brain. Okay? No, no point. Okay, no. All right? So this little piece here is called the reticular complex and is the, you know, uh, reptile brain. Okay? It's called, the, it controls breathing, heart rate, eating, swallowing, sleeping, arousal, biologically, but in, it also influences our behavior. It influences the behavior in ways that we share with reptiles. You see that? That's what's all called the reptilian brain because you see, even though, thank you very much, even though this brain here <laughs> is a minor part of man's brain, this little brain here makes up most of the brain of the reptile. Okay, that little piece here, this R complex here, is responsible for one part of our behavior, but almost all of the behavior in a snake or a crocodile or these creatures. You with me? Yes, sir. Uh, this other brain here, the limbic system, that is a, well, that's the cerebellum here, but the limbic system here is called the mammalian brain. Okay? And uh, it influences our emotions, especially fighting and fleeing, the fight flight response, okay? It also drives us to seek food and drives us to mate. You see that? Those four major functions, you know, comes from that limbic system or the midbrain, what's all called the mammalian brain because this part of the brain in other mammals, dogs, horses, sheep, lions, goats, whatever, right, controls most of their behavior. You see that? But well, these two parts of your brain, the reptile brain and the limbic system here, are animal brains within us. And that is a source of our emotions and sensual drives. Meaning that, you know, I want you to stop and think about it. Whenever you're angry, whenever you're indulging fear, worrying and grieving, and you are indulging sadness or whatever, and you want to fight or run away from your situation, and things of nature, right? You are under the control of two animal brains within you. 